Hello everyone, in today's lecture I am going to solve a RMO problem which was asked in the year 2010. Now first I am going to explain the question. The setup is, we have given three quadratic equation P1 of X, P2 of X and P3 of X which is composed of A and B as you can see here where A, B, C are non-zero real numbers. Now there exists an alpha such that they have given the condition that is P1 of alpha is equal to P2 of alpha is equal to P3 of alpha. If these three values are equal then we need to prove A is equal to B is equal to C. So let's start. Now it's given in the question that P1 of alpha, P2 of alpha and P3 of alpha are equal. Let's say they are equal to one more value lambda which I'm taking from my side. Now I'm going to equate P1 of alpha with lambda here. So P1 of alpha, P1 of x is given that means instead of x we have to put here alpha. So we'll get this as A alpha square minus B alpha minus C is equal to lambda. Let's say this is our first equation. Similarly I'm going to equate P2 of alpha with lambda, I'll get this as B alpha square minus C alpha minus A is equal to lambda. Let's say this is our second equation and for the third equation it's very obvious that I'm going to equate P3 of alpha with lambda. So I'll get this as C alpha square minus A alpha minus B to lambda. Third equation. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to equate the value of alpha here because if I remove alpha square if I eliminate alpha square from all the equations maybe I'll get a beautiful alpha so how to eliminate alpha square by making the same coefficient of alpha square in both equations let's say first and second equation I want to eliminate alpha square the first equation I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply by b minus second equation I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply by a let's see what we're getting here I'm going to write on right hand side here so we'll get this as ac minus b square times alpha minus times that means I have to write BC minus A square here. Similarly I'll get this as lambda times B minus. Now if I want to eliminate alpha square from second and third equation I'm going to take the second equation I'm going to multiply by something. That something is uh, C and I'm going to take the third equation I'm going to multiply by B. The result I'm writing on the right hand side as you can see here. The result will be AB minus b square times alpha minus times ac minus b square is equal to lambda times it's very obvious we'll get here c minus b now for the third elimination from third equation and first equation i'm going to eliminate alpha square so obviously I'll, i'm going to take the third equation first and i'm going to multiply with a minus first equation i'm going to multiply with c result i'm writing on the right hand side so you will get this as bc minus a square to alpha minus times uh, here we will get this as a b minus c square is equal to lambda times we will get this as a minus c. Now what I am going to do is to calculate the value of alpha I am going to add all the equations. So if I add this all the equations all the three equations let us collect the coefficient of alpha here. The coefficient of alpha is it is visible that is a c plus a b plus bc minus summation of as you can see b square a square and c square so I can write this as summation of a square meaning is same similarly if you notice one more thing if you add this two term three terms here again you are getting the same thing that is a b a c and b c similarly minus a square minus b square minus c square so I think this term will be common and I can write this as alpha minus 1. Now on the right hand side it will be equal to as you can see lambda is equal I can take out common lambda minus a will cancel out with a minus b will cancel out with b and minus c cancel out with c so remaining is 0. So this equation I am going to solve in the next page. Now we got this as product of two numbers is equal to 0. Now we have two aspects here either alpha minus 1 is equal to 0 that means either alpha is equal to 1 or either ac plus ab plus bc minus summation of a square is equal to 0. So we have or that means this is also possible this is also possible. So let's try to solve this okay. In the end I am going to check for alpha is equal to 1 also. So this is a very important term I can write this as summation of a square minus summation of continued product of two numbers. So I can take this as summation of ab that means ab, bc and ca addition. So if this is given to 0 remember everyone 
if it is equal to given that if it is equal to zero in the exams this is a very 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 important term because this is previously used by iit and kvpy many times so what you're going to do here is we're going to multiply and divide by two and i'm going to tell you the result and you have to remember the result if you can possibly so if i multiply and divide by two inside i'll get this as two a square plus two b square plus two c square minus twice i'll get this as a b minus twice b c minus twice remaining is ac here now this will be equal to zero now think of a perfect square how many perfect square you can make here so i can write this as half times inside you can make a perfect square using a square and b square because 2ab is visible so again you can make a perfect square of a square and c square because 2ac is possible similarly the third you can make with b and c so you, this the whole thing you can write this as a minus b whole square plus b minus c whole square plus c minus a whole square is equal to zero now as you can see sum of perfect squares are zero and perfect square is always greater than or equal to zero this is also greater than or equal to zero and this is also greater than or equal to zero and it is equal to zero that means all these values are equal to zero so if individual values are equal to zero this implies here that means a is equal to b similarly b is equal to c and similarly c is equal to a otherwise this is not equal to zero and this implies that all the values a is equal to b is equal to c so hence proved from the first part now we'll go for alpha is equal to one so if you put alpha is equal to one all these equations here the first equation the second equation and the third equation and if we equate all this again you will get this as a is equal to b is equal to c from the second part also so if this condition is given if alpha is a real value for which this condition is true hence prove that a is equal to b is equal to c we have proved and that will be all for this question